Top Esports on the blue and the red. Tell me what you see here. Tell me what you're interested in. Uh, so, bans, I don't think anything too crazy. We talked a lot about the uh, mid lane bans. We'll see towards Rookie. Lee Sin denied from Chana for that banger game. Leona away from uh, PP God. And then we see the, the Zaya picked up. And I think this trade off is something we're going to see throughout the series. Zaya, Aphelios between uh, V5 and Top Esports. Ultimately, it, it, it's a situation where we don't see Botic playing the Zaya. Uh, so we'll probably see that trade-off coming on. Zyra Khan, pretty strong. Aphelios, Nautilus, and then the trade-off, these junglers. Nothing too crazy coming out. I'm going in the second rotation. Uh, V5, obviously, you have the uh, option to get counter pick for themselves. Yeah, and we can already see now they're kind of focusing in on Wayward for V5, saying, look, we're not going to give you a, an incredibly easy matchup. The Trindamir, the Jace, slowly working towards those top lane bands to see what they can do. And honestly, like you said, they could give Rich the counter pick, but they can also give it to Rookie. Again, Rookie is someone who has consistently been shown to just be an exceptionally powerful laner in his own right. And now we got to see what they want to go for. For top esports, where do you want to throw this final ban? Honestly, I was just about to say, I wouldn't mind seeing another mid lane ban. Just try and whittle down the mid laners for the side of Rookie. Honestly, though, here, oh, we actually see the Gnar come out as a blind for Rich. I mean, a lot of top laners ban in the situation. I think Wayward, though, he has lent heavily on this Graves. Really comfortable to take that in that matchup. Uh, the interesting one will be what Knight takes in this situation. Because we've often seen him lean on, uh, we've often seen the Rise be a big pick. We talked about, well, the Death talked about at the start of the day. A big factor for uh, Top Esports was enabling Knight, having him be that big carry. And it looks like they are just going to lock in that Rise. So very, very strong mid jungle for Top Esports. They absolutely have the advantage uh, in that regard. And it's up to V5 to try and match that. Yeah, and we'll see now what this last pick is going to be for the side of Top Esports. They've got a couple of different options. They know they're going into a NAR. They know they have ways of just dealing with that with the Trundles. So, curious to see what they end up locking in at the last second. And could be a Yordle versus Yordle in that top side. You could get the cannon coming in. Of course, has been incredibly prolific for a lot of our top laners so far this playoffs. And honestly, right now for V5, you just got to round it out. You got to find something in the mid lane, something that rookie can, you know, stand up and be counted on. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like the hover and the Galio here, we've seen a lot of trade-offs where one team takes Rise, you want to be able to match it, you take the Galio. Uh, particularly we saw in the JDG RNG series, uh, we saw the Galio come out where Shahu just dropped waves to Predator to make sure he was there in the skirmish first. And I think it's really necessary, right? Because when you have this Viego into the Trundle and there's also that Rise, if you uh, don't take something that can be very active in those early skirmishes, you are just going to lose out in the mid jungle. And that's been the talking point for playoffs. That's been the development of the meta over the course of uh, our knockout stages is that mid jungle having that ability to fight to contest is so incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see there as well, like like you mentioned, the mid jungle, you have those skirmishing junglers, the Viego and the Trundle. Trundle should be able to do a decent amount into the Viego in those early stages. Does slightly you know favor the Viego the longer the game goes on. He does become more of a carry. Of course, we do remember Carsa on the Viego in one of our previous previous rounds where you end up with 17 kills. Absolutely insane. But it does feel like if you're able to get those big ultimates out of the side of uh, V5, they lose a little bit of that momentum. If you lose the Heartbreaker, you lose the, the uh, Hero's Entrance off the Galio, and if you're able to survive that, there should be more ways for top esports to kind of turn the fight in their favor. Well, I say, honestly, it can go in the other direction as yeah, well, right? Because you have the Quickness from the Rakan, you have the Slicing Maelstrom. I think both teams have tools enabled. I do feel like for the side of uh, V5, having the Viego, right, who's able to reset, having the Aphelios who has a bit more DPS, and the Zaya does mean in the longer fights they'll, they'll be comfortable. But ultimately, you know, I feel like a lot of top esports games haven't been about who is the better team fighting composition. It's really been about, you know, top esports winning out the early and then when it comes to later making some mistakes. So they have the tools here, but I feel like V5 can contest, so I'm going to be really honing in on this early game and seeing who comes out ahead. Yeah, and the great thing about this matchup as well is that we've already seen it. We've seen this already happen so far in the playoffs, and it went all five games. Now we get a repeat of it. Will it be a repeat in terms of the result? We'll have to wait and see, but we are jumping onto the riff for game one of this best of five. Remember, winner goes into the grand final this Sunday, this Saturday, excuse me, to play against RNG. Loser is out and waits until summer split. A lot on the line, and it got to feel like for top esports, the belief is there. They know they can do it because they've done it before. 100%. I mean, they managed to dismantle V5, and in this situation, it came in with a similar strategy where they're targeting Rookie in the ban phase. They have that strong mid jungle. And I'm really looking at Tian. We've often seen Tian go for those invades. And an important factor has been having lanes that can follow him up in that manner, which he is going to have here, right? Uh, the thing with the, the Predator Galio is you are going to be able to use that 
uh, to cheat, essentially. When Rise has the prior, you can essentially just go, oh, screw my waves, I'm going to run there, I'm faster. Uh, so I think top esports need to be really coordinated when they go for those engages, otherwise they can get caught out by that, especially because Galio, he's so strong in those early skirmishes. If he lands a taunt into a full combo, you're likely just dead. Well, we were looking at the actual numbers there last week when we were talking about Galio, and it's like 90% on his taunt in terms of AP scaling off of it. There's 90% off of his W. It's like there's a lot of different things there, and it's like, you know only 70 for his ult. But the longer those kind of you know cooldowns come in, especially early on, you know, and you're getting those like big you know kind of trades, it can be very significant in the lane. Yeah, I mean, Fed Galio is just disturbing, honestly. Uh, the damage it'll have. What are you going to see with the top lane matchup? Uh, I feel like Wayward taking the, the cannon here, you're pretty comfortable with, right? You will lose eventually to the Gnar on the side lane, but it's not too much of a concern, and you're going to outperform in team fights for the most part. Of course, Rich obviously can get a big ultimate, but with the cannon, you don't have to wait for Mega or anything. You just go for it and find the angle. Well, we'll see what they want to go for. Of course, we've seen a lot of 2v2ing happening, as we said, on the desk as well. Stable 2v2 here as well. And I feel like in the last series, there's a lot of back and forth between these two bot lanes. It wasn't just a sit back and farm lane for either. It felt like both were looking for windows to contest. And we saw that, right? We saw 2v2 kills going in both directions. And I expect more here. You can see with the Zyrakon power level 1, especially since Aphelios essentially doesn't have any abilities, uh, Top Esports looking to heavily contest and have control of the lane. But, trade coming in. Trade is coming in. Level 2 for both bot lanes. We do have the Viego coming in. Bacarsa should be spotted out. Knows he's been spotted out, so gonna take away that ward and then just walk himself away. But you do have to be very careful. Yes, you are a Zaya Rakan, very powerful in your own right. However, that Nautilus in the 2v2 has a lot of CC. I think they've just stuck themselves, right? Because they, they pushed the lane early, but they weren't able to get the crash because Cast is there, and they're just getting zoned out with this wave trapped in this position. It is essentially going to bounce back, so it'll be okay. They also have Tian here to offer assistance, but ultimately, already, even just three minutes in the game, you're seeing V5 doing everything they can do to find these mana advantages. As a bot lane, the Photic and PP God are well used to. You can see there, eight wins, six losses, and eight wins, five losses, respectfully, on the Aphelios and the Nautilus. They are very, very prolific and very well versed on what this bot lane can and cannot do. And curious to see how they're able to move it around. I will say, we look at the junglers and how they're making that, you know, how they will make that early impact. And it does look like Karsa, again, just trying to shadow towards this bot side, making sure that his team can get the crash. Yeah, super important here. Obviously, when you know Tiana's around as well, you want to be able to offer that support so they can get the crash in. But I just found it hilarious how many sweeping, uh, how many sweeps we saw come out there. Both teams just working so hard to clear out the vision in the river. Uh, I think it was like three or four wards just got cleared in that small passage of play. So. Teams really centering a lot around this bot lane, which I think makes sense, right? Uh, obviously, if you can snowball the bot lane, it's going to give you a massive advantage. You have these roaming mids who, once six comes online, particularly, they'll be able to move down there. Uh, and both teams knowing that, you know, Jackie Love or Fotic are very valuable players to put resources into. Yeah, well, we see PP God was just playing keep away there as Fotic wanted to get himself a little bit of a cheeky recall. And now PP God's going to try and do the very difficult task of uh, covering the lane while his AD carries away. Maybe try and stop the wave just before it crashes so he doesn't I've lose seen, as much. I've seen so many supports die trying to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say. You're not going to really do it there when there's two of them, but I've seen so many supports attempt that and just flat out die as a result. Obviously, there's a lot of value if you can freeze, but they did get the crash uh, and get the reset, so pretty comfortable. One of the nice things as well is that with the Zyra Khan, you can have like one of you goes ahead and ensures the, the crash recall. as you're this channel and then you just come in and you match. Uh, so one of the nice little benefits, a lot of the benefits between Zyra Khan I feel like have been toned down over time. Uh, the power they had on the level one together, uh, a lot weaker than it used to be. But there's still things like the longer uh, dash range on your E to get to your ally. Uh, there's still things like the shared recall, which, especially when you're talking about how teams have like, we need to reset at this time so we can get to like Herald or something, it can be really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to make note there as well. We're already seeing the junglers go back on their first buy. Two Ruby Kistles and two Long Swords. So we can kind of <laughs> see the, the difference in terms of what way they're going to go for. But the reason why I brought it up was, well, again, Tien has been, was caught out. He had to sweep. He realized he was on top of a ward. And it is just this constant battle of figuring out where people are, but they oh, don't Lord. know where Rookie is. And it's going to be a bit of a problem here for Mark. He can't get the dash away, but can he get himself off? No, I don't believe he can! That's first blood to V5, and that was just smart macro moves. Yeah, I mean, really nice roam coming out from Rookie, right? Manages to find the opportunity, the extra speed from the Predator, and even hopping over the wall. And then the CC layering. It's actually very hard to kill a Rakan, and I think Mark maybe a little... A little bit overconfident because he didn't opt to flash the taunt. Instead, thought he could dash it. He got interrupted and then he didn't get a chance to press any buttons. 
after that point, but a good play from V5 that will secure them this first dragon. Yeah, good play, and again, it's one, you know, something I always go back to. What does the kill lead to? Is it anything bigger? And it is something big, bigger as well, but it is going to be a massive moment here, as we can see. It's just CC after CC after CC. Yeah, and there, like, he goes for the dash, gets interrupted, so he doesn't get to Jackie Love. If he'd flashed it, he would have survived. But I can completely understand it, right? Especially when you're with Azaya, you have the longer range dash. You've got to try and uh, maintain your summon if you can, but a good proactive play. And so far, we talked about the mid laners trying to get enabled on the map. V5 are first to do it, but there was a cost. If you look at the mid lane chest discrepancy, a difference of 60. Oh, oh Turk, he's going to probably have to lose something here. Possibly oh, his no. flash and his heal, but yeah, he's going to have to use it. He's caught between a Rakan and a giant ice pillar. Does lose a summoner, doesn't lose anything else, but again, good early proactivity from Top Esports, not taking that last uh, skirmish lying down and getting a response. And you're probably almost always going to have to flash there, but Fotik walking up against the wall, very risky, right? Because it means the pillar, it forced him to walk all the way around uh, and obviously has flash, so doesn't really change things as I think you would have to use it anyway, but definitely want to avoid those scenarios if you can. And it means that uh, Top Esports going to be able to push that lane in. CS discrepancy is still in favor of V5's bot lane. Obviously, it's even when you look at the scoreboard, but there is a way for both to pick up. But as I was saying before, is a, a loss in the mid lane for Rookie. But he goes for those roams, but he doesn't necessarily have Pryo, and he's using Predator to cheat it. He will lose out over the course of the game. That's kind of crazy as well. We're seven and a half minutes in. It's only been the single kill, but it has felt like the pace of the game has been rather rapid. It feels like we have seen quite a few smaller moves just kind of being answered and, and pushed and pulled away. So right now, it is going to be more on top easy sports to try and, as you say, make those big level sixes work. You've got access to the Slicing Maelstrom, the Realm Morph as well, big global ultimates. Of course, you have got the same on the other side, but it is going to come down to who can execute on these ultimates better in these team fights. 100%. And I mean, there's, there's so many powerful tools in that regard, right? Uh, it also comes down to who can get on top of the enemy he carries. You know, there's a lot of safety for Jackie Love on the Zaya. That's a big aspect to take into account. You're also playing into a bunch of short-range champions, which Zaya really flourishes in. Uh, oh, we're going to see it engage here to get the dredge line. But good feathers there from Jackie Love. Stops anything else from coming out. I was a little worried for Mark as there was, uh, you know, a little moment there where maybe a Moonlight Vigil could come out. But they're totally fine. Like you said, very safe in the 2v2, the Zyra Khan. Regardless of everything that got mitigated from their release, they're still a pretty powerful bot. Uh, and that's the thing, right? It's so hard to engage in Rakan because he has some ability. It's also hard to engage in Zyra because of the feathers. Now, we do see Top Esports setting up for this hell on the top side. They have mid prior to lean towards that, but we can see already the bot lane of V5 are walking over. So top esports, they need to get out or get this very quickly or they're gonna get crapped on. Oh, they gotta be so careful right now. 3000 HP on top of the Rift Herald. And I don't think TN or Knight can really do this here. Wayward's being kept away by Rich. They'll land a dredge line. They're gonna have the hook as well to try and make it work. And they go over with the Heartbreaker and top esports are being murdered right now. There's nowhere for Knight to go. He's gonna try and roll more, but he gets CC'd. And now Mark's in a terrible position. He has to flash away. And this is a disaster. And honestly, just a criminal play from Top Esports, right? You go for that one, and you know that the enemy bot lane is resetting his head and over. You have, you don't have top priority, so Rich is able to move first. And Rookie, he's a Galio. So yes, you had prior mid, but he cleared the wave out very quickly and was ready to move. All these things that are said to Top Esports that this was not the play, and despite that, they go for it anyway. You can even look around, there is five members of V5 collapsing onto these two. The Rakan is only just coming on the minimap, and Zai is in base. There's no way you're gonna win this. And honestly, what they should have done is gone, right, guys, we can't win this play. Uh, and then said, Jackie Love, keep pushing bot lane, at least get some plates. But instead, they don't really get anything in the bot lane, uh, and they lose out massively on the top side of the map. As well as that, you only used one flash on PP God versus the three that you got on top esports. That was one flash hook that set up that entire play, and it comes back to... The idea that you talked about the Predator Galio, regardless of you of Pryo or not, you can still make yourself useful, get yourself into a fantastic position to make plays yeah, I mean, like that. He just slams the minion yeah. wave <laughs> and then is there in a second. So that's why we have seen it picked so much into the rise of something that's able to match it. But V5 already getting some of that early advantages. And I think critically the big thing is Carsa getting ahead 
on this Viego. We've seen what he can do on this champion, and it is one that can absolutely snowball and take over the game. A fed Viego will just find, you know, so much pressure in those team fights. And look at the utility he will have with everyone on the side of top esports. He kills pretty much everybody, except for maybe the cannon. He has so many tools at his disposal just to try and, you know, get those extra CCs down, get the resets, Dude, keep the fight going Rakan. in his favor. The only downside of Rakan is he's quite squishy, but like the mobility, you go in, you dash your ally, dash forwards, and then all tower fit, and it, it's so easy. The trundle to, ice so pillar good. just yeah. to be an absolute nuisance. Like there's so many things that can go wrong for the side of top esports. And honestly, this is starting to get a little bit worrisome. It's three kills to nothing. It's about a thousand gold lead. It's not exceptional, but they've already got a dragon on the board. They've already got the rift herald in the back pocket. Divine Sunder has been finished up. You've got a couple of things going right for you. Top Esports need to stop that momentum. Yeah, and I think a big reason why it's concerning is because we've seen Top Esports struggle when it comes to the mid late, right? The early game has been where they have had their prowess. The series against RNG, they crushed the early game in pretty much every oh, game. Night. He has no flash, he has no flash and nowhere to go. Oh, the Trundle Pillar was huge there. It just about gets the right amount of CC. They have to use the Subjugate as well, but no, like you've used a flash there from Rich, absolutely fair, but you haven't used any of your big ultimates. You still have the Hero's Entrance and the Gnarled. But there's a cost, right? Rich roams down to make that play work. He's going to lose out on the Cess advantage he had. He's going to lose a plate. So as much as I like the play, I like when top laners have the opportunity to roam down and look for a, a mid gank. Oh, oh no. Tien, he doesn't have an ultimate. And He's probably going to go down. That is going to be a pretty easy kill. And that's kind of why I highlighted the fact that you didn't even use the hero's entrance because it means that plays like that are still available. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I feel like not the best setup for Galio is a Viego, but still able to find the knock up on the edge. And now they'll go for this play in the bot lane. Uh, and, and you can see on top of that, because Tian is dead, you know there's no jungler to contest on this side. You also know that there's no Tian on the top side of the map to cross map. So. B5 have all the information, they go for the Herald, they don't quite get the tower, uh, but they're just able to extend that gold lean. 2,000 gold up now, and Kars is 3-0-1. This is exactly what you want out of this game. Kars on this Viego is a different beast. It feels like, you know, we talk about LPL... So oh, oh. I'm going to stop myself here. We're all going to be coming in. Both are going to a little bit of a trouble. Oh, he beautiful, flashes beautiful. right on top of the predicted entrance, and that's going to be a nice pick up there for Top Esports, finally making something work. Yeah, so finally we see Knight enabled in one of these roams on the rise. They're able to get both sums from Photic. And I think we have to talk about the fact that despite uh, V5 being ahead, well, we can talk a little bit about that after, but look at the prediction. Knows he's gonna flash in that direction. Follows up on clean. it, really well played. But as I was saying, Constellation Prize for Top Esports, they didn't lose Bot Tower. They also are getting some plates here and they killed Photic, so it, it could be worse but it's still not exactly pleasant right now for them. It's not really a great start to a game, is it, when you're saying it's could phenomenal. be worse? It's not phenomenal. <laughs> it's, not, it's not where you want to be as such, as we can see now. Rich pushing in on top of Wayward in the top side, but with second Herald spawning in actually only about two minutes' time, so not really in a position to be fighting over that one there. Top East Watchers gaining control, and you can see already just how defensive they have to be here with their pink wards, one in the top left and the bottom right, just to try and make sure they're not being collapsed on in top side or in mid. Yeah, and I think Top Esports have the right idea going for a pick like that. I think they can continue to look for those opportunities, especially when you have like a Rakan and a Rise, you can very easily CC a target. Uh, but it's a minute and a half until that Herald. It is going to be two minutes until the Dragon, and that is something that is concerning. V5 already stacking up those Dragons. Here's a Cloud Soul. I don't think it's like, you know, absolutely spectacular for V5, but it's still a pretty powerful one. Uh, especially just a flat movement speed can make a lot of difference if there's like a cannon running at you can help you get another away from him and out of the slicing maelstrom but i feel like top esports would, would be the team who'd love a cloud soul but are quite a ways away from it right now yeah absolutely and again this is the thing with v5 you know we talked about how many you know the good resetting you know setup they have for themselves on top of the viego but they are no spring chickens when it comes to those five to five, you know, back front to back team fights as well. They've got the engage with the Nar and the Galio. They have ways of making these work for themselves. And with the way the map is kind of shaping up right now, it does feel like V5 are going to be a little bit more favored the longer this game goes on. Yeah, we do see towers taken across the map, right? V5 make the call to sacrifice that bot tower, which I really love because the next objective is that second Herald, right? So they sacrifice bot tower. Uh, Rookie leans up towards top, they get that top tower, and the rest of the team is all grouped around the second tower. So you can see, if you look at the minimap, so much vision already on this top side. It's going to be very hard for top esports to move in and contest this neutral objective. Uh, and with Rookie having TP, he can just grab that bot wave and then move over. So 
you know, top esports have a choice. They can either try and move their vision to the bot side, but the problem is Dragon is like 50 seconds after the Herald, so V5 should be able to contest anyway. My question is, are top esports going to try and force their way in here? You see PP got already fishing in vision for a potential pick. Well, there's going to be V5 starting it off, and honestly, with the position of uh, Tien right now, I don't think Top Esports want anything to do with this. So this is, again, a third neutral objective in a row going over to the side of V5. And they are starting to take over the game. And this is what we loved about V5 during the regular split. This is why V5 were, honestly, a lot of people's favorites coming into the playoffs because they find these early game advantages. And if they do find them, they just take over the game. It just feels like they're just constantly going from strength to strength. And now we have to hone in on the next objective, right? Top Esports opted out of the uh, Herald. They opted towards the bot side of the map. You can see they got some deep vision. That ward in particular at the top right of your screen is one I want to highlight that would be perfect for a cannon flank. So, V5 are likely going to throw down the Herald mid to get priority and then move into the river. And that's where you set up for a potential flank from Wayward where Top Esports can look to find the Dragon. Although it looks like V5 a little bit slow on this one. So, Dragon will already be started. Gonna go for it right now though. PP God now just saying, look, I'm a I'm a Nautilus. I've got plenty of tank stats there. Rich trying to build up the Mega Nara. There's TP Flank on that ward. TP's coming in, but it's a stolen straight away. V5 now on Soul Point. They get in with the hero's entrance as well. They get that little bit of magic damage shield. They try to go in with the quickness. Mark not quite taking the damage. Has to flash away. The Moonlight Vigil goes completely wide. But the resets are coming in. The Viego is strong. The mobility he has. Honestly, this feels like it's V5's game. And top esports try and cheat, right? I said they should back out a river. River, and then they should go for the TP flank instead. Oh, they're still looking for more though. Ah, PP God goes a little bit too far forward, but does have the stasis to keep himself alive. There's the slicing Melstorm, but it's not really doing much. These massive health bars, they have a realm more, but can they get people out? They can only get one, and there's no tower there for Knight. He's not got flash either, and they're gonna keep pushing forward. They're gonna keep getting the advantages, keep getting the kills. Top Esports are routed. Yeah, crushed in that fight, a 4,000 gold lead. 4v5, three dragons in hand, and they're looking to push and continue that momentum. Top Esports made some criminal errors there and are getting punished for it. Oh. Rich looking. Yeah, he still has the ultimate, and there's no flash, no ult. Oh my god, it's a disaster for Top Esports. That's putting it lightly. Yeah, it's going from bad to worse. Honestly, it feels like, you know, they lost a the dragon. That sucks. They lost a couple of kills. Okay, that's pretty rough. And then they lose more and more. They lose uh, so much. They lose a tier two on the bot side as well. It's just completely falling apart. And I think this fight could have been a lot better. So they start the dragon. And the problem is that means they get engaged on instantly. And if you look at the TP, it's too far away. What I wanted was for them to let V5 move into the river. River, then you look for the TP flank. But because they started the dragon, they got caught up in this fight. And you can just see at the top of your screen, by the time Wayward arrives, everyone's already dead. So it's just completely fruitless. And I think Top East was completely mismanaged this. It really did. And it looks like here, PP God goes a bit too far forward, but he knows he has got the stopwatch. He knows he's got the stasis to buy time for his team. And there's just not the damage right now. And you can see this cannon all from Wayward is like, I want to finish PP God, but also I don't want to be invested in this fight. They know the fight's already doomed, but because they commit there, they just end up losing more and more and more. Ah, uh, it, it's, it's more frustrating because I think the setup was correct from Top Esports. Uh, just the execution. the execution, horrific. But V5, just flawless in how they look to punish that 4-0-4 now on Carter. Not quite at the 17 kill record he set, but... Uh, right, but he's looking like a bit of an error on the side of Top uh, yeah, Esports. Yeah, <laughs> did, did a pretty good job of getting the momentum already. And the thing is, there's the strong champions across the board, right? Rich is looking pretty solid. Photic on this Aphelios, already two items completed really going to be difficult for top esports from this position i mean look at just the the the, the stats you now have available to you for the you know the, the nar the galio the the viego if you're not jumping onto photic you're not killing anyone that's just a fact right there because there's just no one you can actually get on top of and it's just becoming and it's and it's frustrating like you said because top esports are a fantastic team this is not indicative to what we've seen we're going to see a little bit of a fight here. But again, it's Karsa with so much HP and magic. You're not going to kill him. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you're lacking damage, when everyone's a bit bruisery, right? Because the Galio's bulky, Nar Viego bulky. Even the Aphelios with the Bloodthirst a second, you're going to have that extra shield that makes you bulky. It's not like there's a, a necessary easy target to 100 to 0, which is what top esports need. Now, V5 did a fantastic job using this pressure from Rich. 
moving Photic over when the wave hits that second tower to pick that one up. That's a ton of extra gold. They're now at a 7,000 gold lead. Uh, they're in a fantastic position. It's a minute 20 until they can potentially have Soul. Baron is on the cards. And my question is, are Top Esports going to approach this next dragon better? And more importantly, will it matter? Because the thing is, with this discrepancy, yeah. even if they play it perfect, there's no guarantee it works. And the thing is, you've got the two item spike here for the Zaya. We always talk about the mana, or the Mur mana on top of the Eclipse, but you already have two and a half items for the Aphelios. It's not as if he's lagging behind. Yes, you'll do significant damage, but is it going to be enough? That's my question. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's going to be the big thing. It's also wayward on this cannon. Doesn't quite have the Void Staff. You've got a Maw on the Gnar. You've got uh, a Negatron and the Merc Treads on the Viego. You've got Merc Treads on the Galio, the Bloodthirst, Bloodthirster on the Aphelios. These things are all going to make the difference between that cannon being like a one-shot champion and not doing enough, and then the enemy teams are staining up. So I'm worried. Uh, ultimately, if they can get a deeper ward to go for, that'd be a big play. But actually, if you look at how the map has played out, they are just sacking the Dragon. They are just saying, you know, Cloud Soul, maybe not the biggest concern. Uh, and instead, they're, they're sending two members to overload that top lane. They're going to look to get that top lane tier one with some extra objective bounty gold, but that does mean Soul is just gone. Yeah, Soul is going to be forfeited over to V5. And yes, it's a cloud Soul. It's not the most impactful in the game ever. However, it does lead to a much earlier Elder Dragon. Yeah. That's the scary thing now for the side of top esports. Yes, you can give up this dragon. You cannot give up the next. Yeah, 100%. But honestly, I think this might be the right call. As I said, I don't think cloud Soul is super impactful for V5. Uh, the movement speed is nice, but it's not exactly a game you changer. You whatever stats you can. Yeah, uh, and, and ultimately, for top esports, you only get one more fight. I think if you lose another fight, the game probably will just end. And if it doesn't just end, you will lose shortly after. So you have to really pick your opportunity well. And the critical thing I'm going to be looking for is flank angles from both the Kennen and the Rakan. If you can just pop Photic and then hopefully catch, say, Karsa in the mix as well, that's where I can see a team fight working. Because as much as V5 have a massive goal lead, if you insta-kill some of these fed members on their team, it's a rough one. I'm not saying it's definitely going to work. That is the best odds you have. I mean, when you're at this stage of the game, you, you got to hope for mistakes as well. You got to hope for a misposition or someone just misunderstands how much CC is being layered down or whatever it is because you are at such a disadvantage right now in the side of top esports and you just need time and money to get yourself back into it. And my concern is we have a stopwatch on the Viego, we have a Zonia's on, on Rookie uh, and I feel like if as long as Karsa survives, even Photic dies, he could probably turn it around. So. Yeah, you're going to have Azania's onto Nautilus as well in a second. PP God's also going to have that in a, in a few minutes. So it's 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 rough. It's definitely a rough situation to be in. And now Top Esports, they know that the Baron is something they have to be very, very aware of because you have two items, if not a little bit more, on pretty much everybody on the side of V5. So that is a very obvious objective that you can take. So Top Esports, you can't just be accepting that you're going to take this fight lying down because you're just going to lose. They will get on top of Wayward. He pops the Slicing Melstrom but it did literally nothing. Absolutely zero damage. And now Jackie Love, he's going to be forced to go into the ultimate to try and keep himself alive. Even use the flash or assume the heal to keep himself healthy. But top esports, they just don't have a... They, haven't, they can't get caught out like that. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, I feel like V5, that's not enough for them necessarily to go on to Baron. They can still try and maintain control. But the huge thing is, Kennen lost his flash. That won't be up for Elder. That will be up if they start to play for Baron. Kennen not having flash I mean, makes such a big this. difference. I mean, they can look for it. They know Kennen doesn't have the ultimate. I mean, we'll see the, Top Esports approach. You don't have the ultimate, and also as well as that, Jackie Love doesn't have ult either. So it's not as if the, the, the Zaya, who's exceptionally short range, just walk up and take this. Karsa is taking a fair bit of damage, I will say, from the Baron right now. You don't take it exceptionally quickly on V5. They are a very tanky team, not very high DPS, and Top Esports should be able to ward them away. But they got what they wanted, right? They don't want to flip the Baron, is the critical oh. thing. But ultimately, you got the Flash and the TP out of Wayward, right? No Flash for the Elder Dragon fight. Uh, and no TP as well to find a TP flank. That's one of the things I was highlighting for this this team. They do lose mid tier one. We'll see if top esports. Yeah, they should just be able to get out of this situation. So, I think V5 got what they wanted out of that. But uh, top esports, you know, they they managed to avoid disaster. Yeah, just about rookie recognizing he was probably on top of vision there as the rest of top esports were corralling to his location. At the end of it all, it was all just a bit of pushing and pulling, but it's just ended with nobody else going down. So 6,000 gold or just shy of it. A cloud soul on the cards for V5. And three minutes until that Elder Drake spawns. I suppose we just wait for the inevitable. You're kind of 
sadly, I'm so, I was going to say, you're looking for big impact plays. Tien's just kind of a, a pillar bot right now. He's kind of just looking to try and catch people out. He doesn't really add that much, apart from just being a meat shield. And for V5, they're sitting pretty. They're just happy to, you know, accept all these extra gold. Don't forget, they're the ones with the crit AD carry. They're the ones with the extra scaling. And Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Nice. I'm sorry, sweet prince. You shall be falling down and... Shall not be coming back here. He will try and maybe just run away. He's very tanky. There's not a huge amount of CC, but there is enough to stop him from getting that. And it took a while as there was two very tanky members of V5. They eventually get the kill. And this has just been the, the honestly the story of the game. And he played as well as he could, right? He waited for the CC to be used before he ulted, but the W cooldown's so low for Casa, uh, just pretty difficult to avoid. You can see the gold graph on the side. Uh, substantial advantages between the top and 80 carries. I think Photic is the main concern. Knight is actually up in goal because of that farm advantage he has. But right now, V5, they know the next objective is the Dragon. Oh, they're being contested. Oh, they are going to be contested here. We are seeing double stopwatch. Double stopwatch. But guess what? Nara doesn't have one. So despite the side of V5's jungler and support having the idea here, they are keeping themselves alive as the grand entrance comes in and Photic finally arrives. He has three items, got himself that Infinity Edge. He is exceptionally powerful. They did lose the Nara, and they will have to be a bit careful, but it's still a minute and a half until that Dragon. They should be able to reset and come back out and, just, and take it. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, Top Esports aren't really able to contest Vision in the area, but they managed to get the stopwatch from Karsa. That's a definitely a nice thing, right? They got a little bit of gold from the Nara as well, uh, especially when it's so close to this Dragon. Those are things you take, and you see stopwatch picked up by Wayward. So that's the nice thing about stopwatch is that essentially you're getting a lot of the value Azonias would give you, except it's only 650 gold. So despite the fact Wayward's behind, it is getting so much value in the situation on the cannon. Uh, and ultimately, Karsa doesn't quite have the GA either. So it's still heavily, 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 heavily favored towards V5. These are little things that you, you like to see. You see the Serelda's Grudge also finished for Jackie Love. Uh, they just have to basically find an angle for this. They don't have the TP for Wayward, that's a critical thing. They're not going to have his Flash. I think we might end up seeing them try and be creative with a Realm Wolf. If they can get Kennen behind and find a good flank angle, that's the possible play on this. And the weird thing is as well, the third item for Rich is a hole breaker. So he's not going to be built for the team fight as of right now. Yes, it's still good stats individually, but not as powerful as, say, something like a Randuin's or, you know, even a Thorn Mail at this point in the game that can give you that extra little bit of healing reduction and also d just straight up stats. But we'll see now what they want to do. Top Esports being pushed back as mid lane gets pushed in. They have got a wave pushing in top side. They do need to deal with bot lane if they can. Rich looking to try and just build his mega by throwing out those boomerangs every now and again. They do get the red buff over to Photic. Photic not got the greatest of guns as of the moment, so not really feeling super confident as they start to move themselves over to the dragon. There's just no vision here for top. Yeah, it's really difficult. They're going for mid prior to try and get a move in, but they don't have any vision. I think they need to use the realm wall probably just for vision on this one. Uh, this is, does grant it when it's channeled. Trying Look to move rookie. over, but it's getting so low. Look at Rookie. They're going to see if they can go for it. But there's the Elf uh -oh. Drake already taken. And now V5 can look for the fight. The Moonlight Vigil goes completely wide. But they can maybe make it work right here, right now. They get the Slicing Melstorm, but it's just not going to do anything whatsoever. All these kills getting taken over. Eventually, one will fall. But the rest have already gone back to the gray screen. It is five for one. V5 decimate top esports in game one if the goal difference wasn't enough if the soul as well wasn't enough then absolutely the elder was and honestly i'm a little bit confused why top esports were so slow approaching should have used the realm of asia to get the vision should have tried to get sights on the dragon sooner but ultimately it's a rough game for top esports and v5 come out from a dominant game one yeah this was just straight up v5 from get minute one all the way up now to just under minute 30 absolute domination and honestly this is the scary v5 we talked about from the regular split they finally feel like they've come to play and at top esports nothing nothing went well absolutely yeah, nothing i think after a rough series against rng to then get demolished game one it's not the end of the world but uh, definitely not going to be feeling too positive for top esports mm -hmm. ultimately i think the draft had tools i think both drafts have obviously their tools but top esports execution was just off in a lot of yeah. manners in a lot of situations i just felt like they were misplaying they were mismanaging uh, and ultimately more than enough for v5 to take that game i mean it just top lane went neutral which is all it had to do jungle was accelerated exceptionally 
Rocky was doing Rocky things and, and not just only, you know, affecting his own lane, but affecting everyone else's. And it feels like once you have agency, we talk about it a lot, but agency is just one of those words of when you when you are given the tools to actively change things around the map, V5 just look comfortable. They look like they know what they're doing. And honestly, they just... It's so scary to think that this team, you know, is in the lower bracket because they are just so damn good with a, with a lead or not. But we did see V5 go up 2-0 against Top Esports last time. We did. So, there you know... some smash games in maybe, there as well. Maybe Top Esports <laughs> is setting this one up again. They're like, look, guys, we know we have to win lose the first two. Let's make it quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> maybe. Maybe Top Esports got some big brain plays going for themselves. But now you got to come in with a reset. Top Esports, you got to just forget about that game. It didn't happen. You just got to assume, basically, you're coming in with a 0-1 scoreline. What do you want to see different? What do you want to see change? Is it draft? Is it, you know, where where did it all kind of, you know, where do you want to see mo movement here from the side of top esports? I think it's tricky. Maybe maybe the concern is the Viego from Casa because it was just, normally the Viego is something that obviously doesn't have the early presence, but the w rise into the Galio, it's like you have the backup of the Galio, it's just able to snowball so heavily. Maybe that's a concern. Maybe you want a top lane matchup that's a bit more favorable, right? They had counter pick and they just took something that was going to go even. Uh, maybe it's even bot lane because you took the Zyra mm -hmm. Khan and as much as Rakan is a strong pick, don't get me wrong, it doesn't have as much agency, right? I feel like they were very reliant on Tian to, to be the problem solver in these uh, scenarios, but ultimately the Trundle just didn't really find any momentum, right? And we've seen fantastic games from Chan, like on the Lee Sin. This game was a bit rough. Yeah, it was a bit rough. And honestly, for free 5 that was exceptional. I, I, I really can't put it any other way. I think Carsa has just been kind of going from strength to strength. I feel like right now, yes, it was kind of the ban rookie show in their last series. It's becoming more and more prevalent that the jungle between the Volibear, the Lee Sin, and the Viego, the holy trinity right now in the LPL playoffs, those, you just have to take them off the board. You can't let them through. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We jumped in a, the draft kind of late, but I honestly don't even really disagree with the bans coming up from top esports. Maybe you could argue the, view, uh, the Leona is a bit irrelevant, right? Because at the end of the day, PB God just took Nautilus and said, fine. He has definitely um, look, looked to sort of prioritize that Leona quite a bit more, but I still feel like with this so Leona and the Nautilus, it's not really going to change too much uh, how the game went. So perhaps that's something you could put towards the Viego. Perhaps even you ban the Aphelios, right? Because that's one of the things is that Photic doesn't play the Zaya, so it either forces them to ban the Zaya, in which case maybe Arya or Lee Sin are available, or if you do, if they do leave the Zaya open, then you have a big AD carry advantage. So yeah, you know a lot of questions there, but uh, ultimately you can see from the goal graph, V5 just completely dominant, and then it was like you know gradually increasing the lead, and then boom, massive increase. Yeah, you can see it just at like key fights where it's like and more and more, it's kind of like free falls after that point. I will say, Jackie Love did. You know, good damage, but it doesn't matter when you're against Uber tanks like the, you know, the the Nar, the Galio, the Viego, who can just and the Nautilus who can just tank up that. If it's not going onto a key carry, doesn't really make a difference. And yeah, again, this is going to be a bit of a, a a tough one for the side of top esports. I want to see what they're able to kind of bring back. But for V5, this is perfect momentum for them right now just building it up to try and get themselves a what people at the start of this playoffs were assuming was going to be the final between themselves and rng but we'll have to wait and see we are going to throw it to a quick break and when we return